what's up everybody this is Damron with Trash Ass Gamers bringing you another Elder Scrolls Online Veteran a Dungeon Guide. This is for Tempest Island. Tempest Island is found in the Malabar Tor region of Old Mary Dominion. Uh, this is a very cool dungeon. I really like the look of it um, and the bosses. It's just a really fun dungeon to run. It's not very difficult um, but it's just I find it very fun. So for those of you that haven't seen, I'm going to basically keep these videos complete. I will speed up through the ads and we'll focus on any mechanics of the boss that I think are important. Um, and I'll point out anything important throughout the dungeon as we go. For the most part, we'll be focusing mainly on the bosses to kind of help you guys get through these dungeons. I will be making uh, veteran guides for all the veteran content in this game. Uh, over the next couple weeks so if there's a particular dungeon you're you know needing help with just hang tight I'm sure I'll get that video up soon enough they take a little bit of time to make um, so anyway here we go through Tempest Island I'll uh, see you at the first boss Alright, so here we are at the first boss of the level, Sonolia the Matriarch. She is an enlarged Lamia. Um, she does have a scream, attract, a scream attack that kind of gives a conical scream right in front of her. If you are standing directly in that, as I was there, you will take a decent amount of damage. Um, so make sure you're waiting on your uh, tank to really pull this boss. I kind of jumped the gun this time and ran right in. Um, but overall, that's the only attack you really need to worry about. Stack the adds on her, take them out, and then just focus your DPS on the matriarch. As long as you're outside of the little scream she does, then the, there's really not much to worry about here. So just have the tank hold on. A uh, healer can heal through the scream, or you can move, because she doesn't rotate her screen. So once she locks into that position, she will stay there. So the tank, you can even move out of that too, if, if you like. So just wipe her up and we'll get moving. On these sections I do like to just kind of run up to the front and pull all the adds up there and you can kind of stack your DPS but we had a few stragglers that weren't coming up with us so it ended up that we had to roll back to go get the adds that they were trying to kill um, as a healer and tank so you can imagine that was taking a while but if you get your whole team to kind of come up to this point all those adds will follow and you can just stack your DPS on them and actually get through this area much faster because this is one of the harder dungeons to get the assassin achievement on just because it's a little bit longer of a dungeon uh, to traverse so here we come up to our second boss Valor in the storm caller not too bad um, he doesn't particularly do too much damage as direct attacks to the tanks. The tank won't have too much difficulty blocking and holding on to that damage. There will be a AoE moving around the room, uh, as you can see over there, that has lightning on the floor. It doesn't necessarily stun you, but it does a little bit of, a, a little bit of damage, not a lot. So try to avoid that um, if you can. He doesn't particularly have much health. Um, and he will kind of do these lightning attacks, direct attacks at some of the players at times. But again, it, he doesn't really cause too much damage. So your healer is going to be able to really heal you no matter what. There's not a lot of high impact damage that's just going to kill you. Um, so you should have no problem with that fight.
on to Yalarasi, the speaker. She's kind of a mini boss, less than 2 million health. Has a few adds around the room with her, an archer in the back. I like to just get them all on the board and kind of eliminate all the adds just to make the fight a little more simple. But overall, it's not too bad. She will do a teleport kind of night blade sh uh, type strike. Um, but it doesn't really cause too much damage. She also has a little AoE that she'll spawn around her. It's essentially a swirling attack with her dual wheel blades. Um, again, just kind of stay out of that. She will drop a few AoEs on the ground that can do some damage, but very minimal. So a healer is probably going to be able to heal you through that as a tank. You really just kind of hang still, and that fight will be over with before you know it she doesn't really have that much defense um, so she will take a lot of damage all right so moving on we're progressing through this nice and efficiently this is storm fist uh, storm fist will um, just heavy um, attack the tank but you should be able to take that as a tank DPS just kind of stay to the side he will put his arm into the ground as you saw there and spawn some storm Atronox to help him in on the fight don't worry too much about focusing on them keep your damage on the boss lay down your AoEs and when they come into the AoEs they'll generally die now the stomp attack that he does you saw there will generate an AoE around him it's a pretty quick AoE and if it hits you it'll launch you up into the air and kind of stun you for a second while it is annoying it stops your DPS it doesn't really do particularly that much damage and when you get kind of to the execute phase he's just gonna burst lightning and he's gonna do this until you kill him this isn't going to cause you much problems unless you're coming in here without a healer. If you are in here without a healer and you don't have a self-sustain ability, that can burn you down slowly because he's just going to pulse that attack. But if you have 3 DPS, you'll probably kill him fast enough anyway. But that's just something to keep in mind. Alright, so moving on to another little mini boss here, um, a humanoid boss with a sword and shield. Uh, this is Commodore Amaniel. Um, he, sorry, not a sword and shield, he has a dual winded uh, battle axe. So the heavy attack from that battle axe can cause pretty decent damage, but as long as the tank hag holds the aggro, you really shouldn't have to worry about that. Um, honestly, that's really the only thing you need to worry about in the sense if maybe you're running this without a tank for some reason. Other than that, he's pretty weak, so just hold him still, DPS him down, and you'll be past this little mini boss in a matter of seconds. Climbing to the summit, as you see, this is one of the reasons I like this dungeon. I like the view of it, kind of climbing to the top here. Uh, so when you get up here, let's make sure we read our scroll. We'll go into hard mode, and uh, we'll be at the final boss of the game, which is Storm Reeve. And she's not too bad, Storm Reeve Nader. Um, a couple things that people don't realize is what's killing you is basically if you stay far away from her, that's going to cause her to do a charge attack at you, which you're going to see happen to the healer coming up. And I've seen a lot of people lose their no death runs on this fight because of that particular attack. And also this AoE she spawns around her feet. That does a lot of damage. And you can kind of get unlucky a little bit because these tornadoes that are on the ground, they can stun you as you're trying to back up away from it. And then you get caught in it and it blows up and kills you. That's kind of bad luck. But there's a little non-luck aspect 
of it in that the longer this fight goes on, the more and more of those tornado tornadoes are going to be on the floor. So let's talk about what we want to do to avoid that situation. So whenever she is standing still, everybody wants to be close to her. If you're close to her, she's not going to do that charged one-shot attack and kill somebody. Um, she'll just kind of stand there and do her attacks on the tank who's holding the aggro and then she'll eventually do her AOE so you're gonna back up out of that and as soon as that bursts you're gonna run right back in so you see he was too far away all the way on the other side of the board so she did that charge attack and that's pretty much gonna kill everybody except for the tank so we really want to avoid her doing that as long as you can avoid her doing that you should be able to do enough damage fast enough that the tornadoes don't become overwhelming and you're getting stunned every couple seconds. Um, if you do that, this fight should really be no problem. Um, you should take her out and uh, we'll check out the monster set here. So the monster set that drops out of uh, this dungeon is actually a really good one um, for the DPS. It is the Storm Fist uh, set. And a lot of DPS uh, run this set recently. Um, I really like it. Um, but anyway, the first part of the set is going to give you some extra stamina recovery. And the second part gives you a 10% chance to cause a Thunderfish shock that deals shock damage and an ending physical damage that actually adds up to quite a bit of damage. So really good set for Stam DPS characters. Um, so if th that's it. Um, if this helped you guys, feel free to like and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time.